In the last few lectures, we learned how to implement prototypal inheritance in JavaScript using function constructors. So basically, in order to allow inheritance, we added methods to the prototype property of constructor functions, right? Now it's time to turn our attention to JavaScript classes. Classes were introduced in ES6 and classes in JavaScript allows us to create a blueprint and based on that blueprint, we can instantiate several objects. So basically, classes in JavaScript allows us to do the same thing which we can do with constructor functions and prototypal inheritance, but using a nicer and more modern syntax. Now remember that classes in JavaScript do not work like traditional classes in other languages like Java and C++. And in JavaScript, classes are simply a syntactic sugar of what we have learned in last few lectures. That means they still implement prototypal inheritance behind the scenes, but with a syntax that makes more sense to people coming from other programming languages. And that's what basically the goal of adding classes to JavaScript language. So the most important point to remember here is that classes are syntactic sugar of function constructor and prototypal inheritance. That means classes are not a new concept in itself. It simply uses the concept of function constructor and prototypal inheritance behind the scenes. With this being said, let's see how to create classes and how to use them in JavaScript. In JavaScript, there are two ways to create a class. The first way is by using class declaration. In class declaration, we use class keyword followed by the name for the class. So we are again going to implement this person blueprint, which we, you know, which we created in function constructor lecture. But this time we are going to create this person blueprint using classes. So in class declaration, we use class keyword followed by the name for the class. Let's call it person again. And then we use curly braces. Okay. So this is class declaration syntax. Then we also have another syntax, which is class expression. Okay. So just like we have two ways to define a function in JavaScript using function declaration and function expression. In the same way, we can declare classes. You know, there are two syntax for declaring classes in JavaScript. One is class declaration and another is class expression. And in class expression, we first create a variable. Let's again call it person. And to this variable, we assign a class like this. Okay, so this is class expression. Let's use class declaration to define our person blueprint. Now, every class should have a special function called as constructor. Okay. And the name of this function should always be constructor. It cannot be anything. Okay. So every class has a special function called as constructor. Now, why this, you know, this function is a special function? That's because whenever we instantiate an object, using a class in that case this is the function which always gets called now if we don't specify this constructor function then by default javascript will provide an empty constructor function okay for the class inside this constructor function we specify all the properties which we want to have for our object which will be instantiated using this person class and the value for those properties will come as argument of this constructor function. So let's say when we create an object using this person class, then let's say we want to have three properties, name, birth, year, and gender. Now the value for those three properties will be passed as an argument for this constructor function. Okay. So to this constructor, let's specify three properties, name, birth year 
and gender. And then inside this constructor function, we specify those properties, we set those properties, and we set them on this variable. Okay, so this dot name equals the value which we will receive for this name parameter. Similarly, this dot birth here and to this let's assign the value which we will receive for this birth here parameter and this dot gender and to this let's assign the value which we will receive for gender parameter so it is exactly same like how we do for function constructors right now let's also add a method for this constructor function so inside this constructor function on this variable, I am going to set a method called calc age. And to this, let's assign a function. And from this function, let's simply log the age. And to calculate the age, let's say new. And let's use the state constructor. So this new date will return us the current date and time. From that current date and time, we want to get the current year. For that, we can use get full year method. So this expression will return us the current year and from that we want to subtract the birth year. So this dot birth year. All right. And this is it. This is our person class. Now this person class will act as a blueprint. And based on that blueprint, we can create objects. We can instantiate objects. Let's see how to do that. So the syntax to create an object from a class is similar to how we create an object from a function constructor. So first we create a variable. Let's call this John. And then we use new keyword followed by the name of the class. Okay. And after the name of the class, we use parenthesis. Now what this will do is when we say new person with the parenthesis here, it will call this constructor function. Okay. Now this constructor function is expecting values for name, birth, year and gender parameter. So we will have to pass those values. So let's say name is John. John was born in 1990 and he's a male. And that's it. Now let's log this John object in the developer console. So John. Let's save the changes and here you can see this John object has been logged. And this John is an instance of this person class. Okay, this person object. Now, again, when we create a class, behind the scenes, classes uses the concept of function constructor and prototypal inheritance. So that means this person is also an object. Okay, and when we instantiate an object like John, from this object, you know, that object, this John object will be called as an instance of person object. Now, let me expand this John object. And here you will notice that this John object has this name, gender and birth year property and calculate age method attached to it. All right, let's create one more object from this person class. And I will simply copy it and let's call it Mary. The object name is Mary and for name birth year and gender we have to specify some values so let's say name is mary she was born in 1995 and she's a female and here let's log this mary object let's save the changes and now john and mary objects have been logged now if i expand both of these objects you will notice that both of these objects has this name birth year and gender property and calculate age method now again here we are facing the same problem right so both of these objects has this calcage method but the definition of this calcage method will remain same for all the instances which we create create from this person class right so if i create thousand objects you know if i instantiate thousand objects using this person class then all those thousand objects will have this calcage method that means we will have thousand copies of this calcage method in the memory and we don't want that now when we were using function constructor in order to solve this problem 
what we did is we added this calc age method to the prototype property of person object in that way all the objects which we created from the person constructor it was simply inheriting inheriting that calc age method it was not attached to those objects it was being inherited by the objects and in that way we resolve the problem now here again since we are specifying this calc age method inside this constructor function okay inside this function and since we are attaching it to this variable that's why every time we you know instantiate a new object using this person class all those objects will have this calc age method now to solve this problem what we can do is we can remove this definition of this calc age from here and we can define it outside of this constructor function and we don't want this calc age to call you know we don't want to call this calc age on this variable so let's remove this and we have learned that in es6 we don't even need this function keyword to create a method okay so we can create method like this now if i save the changes and if i expand john and mary object you will notice that now this john and mary object has only birth year gender and name property so this calculate age is now no more attached to these objects but if you notice this john and mary object has this proto property and if i expand this proto property inside this proto property you will see that we have this calcage method and this proto property is nothing but the prototype of this person object and to prove that let me do the equality check so let's say john dot proto and let's do the equality check with person dot prototype and when i press enter here you can see it is returning true so this proves that this proto property of john and mary object is nothing but the prototype of this person object all right and because of this it is also possible to add a method to the prototype property directly for example i can simply add a method to the prototype of this person object so person dot prototype dot let's say we want to add a greet method okay to this let's assign a function and inside this function let's simply log a greeting message in the developer console so let's say good morning and this dot name okay so we can also do something like this now on this john object let's call this calcage and this greet method so john dot calcage and john dot greet and if i save the changes now you can see the that the age and the greeting message for john has been logged in the developer console okay so now this mary object and this john object is inheriting this calcage method and this greet method from this person object and this calcage method and this greet method is attached to the prototype of this person object okay here we are explicitly attaching this greet method to the prototype property but here we are not ex you know for this calcage method we are not explicitly attaching it but since a class uses you know function constructor behind the scenes this calcage method behind the scenes it will get attached to the prototype property of this person object so this is very basic of what a class is how we can create a class and how we can use it now there are few things which you need to remember about classes so the first thing which you need to remember is classes cannot be hoisted so we have learned that in javascript we can hoist a function declaration that means when we create a function using function declaration that function can be called before it is declared remember but that is not true for classes 
that means you cannot instantiate an object using a class before it is created for example here we are declaring you know this person class now if i try to instantiate an object using this person class before it is you know created for example let's say i want to create an instance and i want to call it mark and for that i am calling this person class okay let's pass some values all right so this is not possible if i save the changes you will see that we have an error so hoisting a class is not possible this is the first point second point is just like functions classes are also first class citizen in javascript that means we can pass a class to a function as its argument and we can also return a class from within a function and this is possible because classes are just a syntactic sugar of function constructor that means they are simply a function behind the scenes and finally the third point which you need to remember is classes are executed in strict mode that means even if you don't turn on the strict mode explicitly classes will be executed in strict mode so this is the basic of classes in javascript we will learn more about classes in our coming lectures thank you for listening have a great day